Welcome to our lecture online. In this video, we're going to get a better understanding of what we mean by the coefficient of restitution when we now relate it to the energies before and after the collision. We still have a similar situation as we did in the previous video where we drop a ball, but here we're dropping it from some initial height, h sub naught. It reaches the floor, it has some initial velocity before the collision, it then bounces off the floor, it has a velocity after the collision, and then it reaches a certain height. Now, if some of the energy is lost during the collision, it will not reach the same height that it had initially because it lost some of the energy. We still have the equation here that tells us that the coefficient of restitution is equal to the ratio of the differences in the velocities after the collision divided by the differences in the velocities before the collision. And notice we do take the absolute value of those differences. Now, we're going to relate the potential and kinetic energies to the object, to the ball, before it hits the floor and after it bounces back from the floor, we're going to relate the velocities and the coefficient of restitution to the heights. Now from the conservation of energy equation, we can say, if we take for example the situation right here, where we have an initial height, the ball is dropped from this height, what will be its velocity when it reaches the floor? So we can say that the energy at the top is equal to the energy at the bottom. Of course, we realize that the energy at the top is going to be equal to potential energy. At the top is going to be equal to the kinetic energy when it reaches the floor at the bottom. The potential energy is going to be mgh. And in this case, of course, it's going to be h initial. And the kinetic energy at the bottom is going to be 1 half mv initial squared. The initial simply means that it's before the collision with the floor. Well, the m's cancel out, and if I solve this for v initial, I get v initial squared is equal to 2gh initial, or v initial is equal to the square root of 2gh initial. I can also say then, of course, that the height h final will be reached depending upon the v final velocity here, and I can say that v final is equal to the square root of 2gh final. So the faster the velocity is of the ball after it, it collides with the floor, the higher the ball will go. Now if we plug these two values in here, we can see that c is equal to the absolute value of v initial. Let's call v1 the velocity of the floor. So the velocity of the floor before the collision, oh, I should say after the collision, and the velocity of the floor before the collision. So it will be 0 minus the velocity of the ball after the collision, which is the square root of 2gh final, divided by 0 minus the square root of and that would be 2gh initial. Now, of course, this would be a negative velocity, so it's minus a minus that, and this would be minus a plus that, because initially the ball would be moving in a negative direction, here it's moving in a positive direction. But because the absolute value signs, it doesn't really matter. Now we can see that the coefficient restitution is equal to, when we take the absolute values, the square root of 2g h final divided by the square root of 2g h initial and then we realize we can cancel out the square root of 2g both in the numerator and the denominator or we can say that this is equal to the square root of h final divided by the square root of h initial and of course we realize that the h the height that the ball starts from and the height that the ball reaches after the collision is definitely proportional to the potential energy that the balls have at this moment and this moment, which is equal to the kinetic energies the ball have just before and just after the collision. If we now square both sides of this, we can now see that c squared, the coefficient of restitution squared, is equal to h final divided by h initial. The ratios of the heights final to the initial height which is proportional to the potential energy final divided by potential energy initial, which is equal to kinetic energy final right after the collision divided by the kinetic energy initial right before the collision. So we can see here now 
that the coefficient of restitution squared is equal to the ratio of the initial and the final energies, or I should say the final to the initial energies. So we can see here that C squared is equal to the ratio of the energy after the collision divided by the energy before the collision. And that's a really big deal when it comes to momentum and understanding the coefficient of restitution. Now here we do have to be careful about one thing. The coefficient squared is indeed equal to the ratios of the final energy to the initial energy of the object involved in the collision, but only in the center of mass reference of the object. For example, when you have two objects approaching one another and bouncing off one another, then we have to keep track of the center of mass of that particular situation. Here it's easy because it's just one object hitting the floor, the floor is attached to the earth, the center mass would be the earth's center mass reference, and so here we can simply say that in this example, in this simplified example, c squared is indeed equal to that ratio. But we do have to be aware that it's related only, that it's only true if we are in the center of mass reference frame. And we'll see some examples in later videos how to apply that. Okay, there's one more thing that we should be aware of with this equation right here. Since c squared represents the ratio of the energy after the collision to the energy before the collision, and let's say that if no energy is lost, then c would be equal to 1, and if all the energy is lost, then c would be equal to 0, we can then say that 1 minus c squared is equal to the energy lost in the collision. And this also can come in very handy when we work with collisions and conservation of momentum. But again, this is only true in the center of mass reference frame, and we'll see later on why we need to take special note of that. But in a simple case like this, this works just fine. It gives us some additional information and additional understanding what we mean by the coefficient of restitution.